In this lecture, we will study various methods of evaluating the limit of a sequence. Firstly, we will focus on sequences which are non-recursive. That is, sequences which are not defined in terms of the previous terms. And in the second part, we will then go on to look at recurring sequences. Now when it comes to non-recurring sequences, what happens is we have two main methods of doing it. So please highlight method 1 and method 2. These two are methods which apply to the case of non-recursive sequences. What is an example of a non-recursive sequence? For example, in method 1, we study this. And what we see here is, un is expressed solely in terms of n. This is an example of something that is a non-recursive sequence. Now, in this case, the first method we can employ is to express un as a proper fraction. So after doing long division, we will find that un is equal to 1 minus 2 over n plus 1. If you are not sure how I get that, we can see that un is equal to n minus 1 or rather n plus 1 minus 2 over n plus 1. Alright, and this is how I get 1 minus 2 over n plus 1. Now, why is this helpful? This is helpful because I know that as n goes to infinity, as I studied in the previous part of the lecture, 2 over n plus 1 will go to 0. So this means that, this is exactly why it's written here. So, this means that the limit as n tends to infinity of un must be equals to the limit as n tends to infinity of 1 minus 2 over n plus 1, which must be equal to 1. If you compare this form with the original one, which is this one, what we find is that over here, I can easily see that as n tends to infinity, this part in yellow, it goes to 0. Whereas over here, as n tends, go, n tends to infinity, I basically get infinity minus 1 over infinity plus 1, which is approximately infinity over infinity. This is not a valid expression. Okay, so we cannot evaluate properly infinity over infinity. I need all of you to remember that we cannot write things like infinity over infinity, so please take down this thing in red in a different color and note to yourself, this is wrong. Okay, but there are times when it is difficult to express un as a proper fraction. So in those situations, we will normally resort to method 2. So in method 2, what happens is, we simply divide polynomials, polynomials in the numerator and denominator by the term with the largest power. What exactly does this mean? Perhaps things will be a bit clearer with an example. So suppose un is of this form now. Okay, n squared minus 5n plus 6 over 2n squared plus 7n minus 2. Now, we see a polynomial, one polynomial which I highlight in yellow in the numerator, and a different polynomial highlighted in green in the denominator. Now, in these two polynomials, what is the largest power? In the top, the largest power is n squared. And in the denominator, the largest power is also n squared. So what happens is, by method 2, I divide by n squared throughout. Okay. So I divide by n squared in the numerator and in the denominator. So each term, I'm going to divide by n squared this way. And upon simplifying, what I get is this. Now, why is this brilliant? Because do you see that now all my n is in the denominator? And because all my n is in the denominator, I know that as n tends to infinity, 1 over n must tend to 0. 1 over n squared must also tend to 0. So this means that 5 over n also tends to 0. 6 over n squared also tends to 0. 7 over n also tends to 0. 2 over n squared also tends to 0. So effectively, if I clean up a bit, okay, 
what happens is in this whole fraction highlighted in blue now this is going to go to 0 this 6 over n squared also goes to 0 7 over n goes to 0 minus 2 over n squared also goes to 0 therefore what am I left with? I am left with 1 over 2 so my answer will simply be half ok so two main methods if you what you see is a simple polynomial then we usually use method 2 on the other hand if it is easy to do long division then I usually express un as a proper fraction ok so let's try one more example take a look at example 14 now in this case un is equals to 1 plus 2 times 10 to the power of n over 5 plus 3 times 10 to the power of n so where's my n? n is in the exponent right it's in a power we call this the exponent so what is my polynomial in terms of n? Well, then my polynomial is actually 10 to the power of n, right? Because I know that... Let me do out a wrong one, okay? So don't take this down first. As n tends to infinity, 10 to the power of n is going to go to infinity. Okay, so I'm going to have 1 plus 2 times infinity over 5 plus 3 times infinity. Okay, this is wrong. Once again, we cannot present this way. So what is the right way to do? Well, we can see that it will be hard to do long division, right? So what I normally do is... I use method 2. Okay, I divide throughout by the highest power, which is 10 to the power of n. So if I were to divide throughout, so this is using method 2. And I divide throughout by 10 to the power of n so please pause the video and take this down and see that you can get up to this step by doing a division throughout by 10 to the power of n well then now if n goes to infinity 10 to the power of n this is going to be very big right 10 to the power of n is very big so this means that 1 divided by a number that is very big is going to be approximately 0 so hence the limit as n tends to infinity of un is going to be equal to the limit as n tends to infinity of 1 over 10 to the power n plus 2 over 5 over 10 to the power of n plus 3 and this is going to be equals to 0 plus 2 over 0 plus 3 where the two zeros come in because this is going to go to a 0 and this is also going to be 0 so therefore my answer is simply 2 thirds okay so what we have covered in this video are two different methods for evaluating the limit of a non-recursive sequence. In the next video, we will study the limits of recurring sequences.